Hello community! Today is about the BERT embedding of sentences from a paragraph or a book. A book if you are too young to know, this is something we old people we used when we were young. So here we go. Of course we are here in a Colab notebook, so what do I have to do? I have to pip install my transformers. Yes, 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 this will be done in seconds. And then, and then, and then, of course, I want to work in PyTorch. So I work on, on CPU only version because we leave this GPU and the TPU to people who really need it for their work. Just a quick check if we have everything we need. PyTorch is installed. Always good to check this. And here we go. So code bird sentence vector for a paragraph. In my last video, I showed you how to do it for the word embedding and the sentence embedding. And now, since we're operating with tensors, we have no problem to do hundreds of sentences or then sum it up and do a word vector for a paragraph. So here we start. We have our NumPy, our pandas. We import our sentence tokenizer. And then, like in the last time, we operate with transformers. So we uh, connect to the Hugging Face library. We are not working with SBIRT, with sentence transformers, which came later. We are operating with BERT transformers. And we load here the BERT tokenizer and the BERT model. And you see this is the naked model with no specific head for, I don't know, uh, masking language models or for some sequence classification. We just take the normal BERT model. So, and we load the pre-trained model so we get all the weights. And the Hugging Face model I choose for today is one of the simplest, is BERT base uncased. And then we just say, hey, the model from pre-trained and the tokenizer from the pre-trained. So let's do this. So we are downloading our PyTorch model. It's 420 megabytes, so it should be done in 20 seconds. And the tokenizer is already provided, so we have the per perfect word piece tokenization of our text. So regarding our text, I have from Wikipedia taken three word pieces. So I have something about inflation, I have something about space, and I have something about medicine. And these are the first paragraphs from Wikipedia. And I would say, well, let's add them together and do a sentence tokenization. And yeah, let's do this actually. What are we waiting for? Have a look at the sentences we get. So we get 13 sentences. Let's have a look at the sentences. So those are all the different sentences I get. We have a beautiful list. And as you can see, we have about inflation. And I think it's here. And then we have the part about space. Yes. Relationship, power, disagreement, philosophers. Yeah. And then I have the part three sentences about medicine. So here we go. Just to make sure that everything is right. Let's have a look at the first sentence. Yes. Beautiful. And if you're still not familiar with the original, here we have the original sentence, then we have the tokenization, where we have a word piece tokenization, and then the token ID, so these are the numerical values our machine learning algorithm will use instead of words, because we have to calculate with numerical values. And as you can see here, for example, the first sentences, the word piece is beautiful because you do not have to split uh, in sub words for our tokenization. Just a sh short reminder, we have two constraints. All sentences must be padded or truncated to a single fixed length. And in BERT base, remember we are 2020, the maximum sequence length is about 512 tokens. Later in SBIRT, if you come up to 2022, you can uh, change, very simply change the maximum length of token, but this is another chapter. So we have here a beautiful command and the command is tokenize encode. And there's even a tokenize encode plus version we're going to take. And what does it do? Now, it splits the sentences into tokens. Beautiful. It adds the special uh, classification token and the separation token in, with that we need for BERT. Then it maps the tokens to their IDs. For CLS, it's 101. And for SAP, it's 102. I know this. Then we pad or truncate all sentences to the same length, so beautifully, and then we create the attention mask, which explicitly differentiate real tokens for our artificially added pad tokens. And if you have attention mask uh, input IDs, 
and we are ready to go. But before, just to make sure, what is the maximum token length in all our sentences? And as you can see, the maximum token length here is 69. So great. So now tokenize all sentences and map the tokens to their input IDs. So we have to list our input IDs that we need in our attention mask. So here we go. Now for each sentence in sentences, we do exactly that. We tokenize the sentence, we add a, a classification token to the start of each sentence, a separation token to the end, we map the token to the idea, we pad or truncate, and we create a tension masks. This is it. We use tokenizer.encode plus, and here we go. And as you can see here, the maximum length here for our padding, I said this is the maximum length plus one, the maximum length is 69 here in our sentences. So you can be sure that you do not add, if you put it on a fixed length, let's say 200 or 300 or 500, you just have a lot of zero in your data set. So we don't use this, we are clean and beautiful. So here we go. So encoded sentences to the list, we append encoded input IDS and we append our encoded attention mask and here we go. We convert this of course to our PyTorch tensor and this is it. So let's have a look how we do. Beautiful. So we have the first sentence and this is the first sentence and if you want to see the token view, this is it. You see we have padded it to 70. And the first, the classification token is 101 and the separation token is 102 at the end. And in between, we have our specific tokens. Now, if you have a look at this, you will see it's the same we have here, 199.5543. 199.5543, as it should be. So, if you want to have a look at the bird model itself, this is a beautiful thing I found. I copied it. And I want to show you, we have at first the embedding layer, in case you have not seen my last video, please go and check it out. I explained everything about the BERT model, the stacked encoder, the embedding layer that we have right at the ground of our stacked encoder. But here you see a self-attention, everything we need with the output layer. I told you also in the last video, just a reminder. And so now we feed everything into our model. This is the BERT base uncased model and we create an output. Since we're working here CPU only, do we have a problem with RAM? No, not at all. We are using a very, very small model. Beautiful. So now from the output, as shown in my last video, there's a specific key that it's called the last hidden state of our encoder stack. And we're gonna take the last hidden state. And from the last hidden state, we take a specific token. And since we have have self attention all over the place here with Bert, uh, in the original paper also there was this specific embedding of the CLS token. Now don't make a mistake; it's not the the, the start token in the non embedding version in the input version, but we run through the Bert encoder stack to have this contextualized embedding. And the deeper, the more uh, encoder stack we have, the more contextualized it will become. This is why we have BERT in the first place. Because with word 2 vec we only have a static word embedding. But now we have a contextualized word embedding running through all the different layers or the stack of our encoder. So let's do this. Let's see how it looks like. Beautiful, the number of sentences is 13. And we have now a PyTorch sender as our output, where we have for all 13 sentences, a vector representation of 768 dimensional components. So a vector in a 768 dimensional vector space. And then we can say, if we have here a look at the data, this is exactly, we have 13 different CLS embedded token representation as a 768 dimensional vector. This is it. This is one specific CLS token that classifies this particular sentence. And because of self-attention, it is enough to have the CLS embedded token as a vector. Beautiful. Now we have just to detach it from a GPU. We don't have a GPU to put it on a CPU and do a NumPy because we want to show this then to our Disney. 
So here we go, we have now a number array and we have a dimension of 13 for each of our sentence. We have a 768 dimensional vector. Here it is. This is it. There are three excellent notebooks I used for this because this is about 2020. So at first, uh, there's a beautiful visual guide to using BERT for the first time. I leave all these three links in the description of this video so you just can click it. Then there's a collab research notebook. I would highly recommend that you have a look at this. And then of course from McCormick there's a beautiful introduction about BERT fine-tuning and some code elements. I definitely refer to those three um, reference articles, GitHub's research uh, collab notebooks. Have a look at these three. They're great. So and now let's do some visualization. So very easily, since we're in the 2020, we are still with, we are still with, where we are? We are with PCA. Okay. So no U UMAP until now for us. So let's do a similarity and then we just do a heat map visualization. Let's see if we have now a visualization of our three thematic topics, because we have inflation, we have space and we have medicine. Okay, here you can see definitely there's something like a cluster and here in the lower and right corner, there's also a cluster and in the middle, well, maybe I'm not sure about this, but no problem at all. We are in 2019, 2020, we have a PCA. We just have a visualization. So let's go and figure it out if we take those vectors and we do a projection of the embedded sentences from BERT. And here we go. You can clearly see that we have three clusters. So sentence zero, sentence one, two, three, four, five. These are our sentences on our relation. Then we have sentence six, seven, eight, and nine here in the lower left corner. This is about space. And then here in the upper left corner, we have our sentence 10, 11, and 12. These are our three sentences about medicine. So yes, great, it works, perfect. This is it, you might say, hey, congratulations. Can we get it any better? Yes, of course. If you switch from, from, from PCA, uh, to some advanced algorithms, of course, you will get a better clustering you know, whatsoever. UMAP, you can, you can experience with UMAP to get a better result. But what I want to show you is a simple thing. We just in, uh, go for a better bird model. Remember that here, I told you that here, hugging face model, we have bird base uncased. But if what happens if we double the encoder in our encoder stack, in our bird model? So we say here large, and if you have seen my last video, you know that BERT large has 24 encoders in the encoder stack, each doing a self-attention with the self-attention head and the feed forward network. So now we should get maybe a better representation. So runtime, run after. Let's see, let's go through everything. Fast, fast, fast. Now, of course, our model is much bigger. We have 1.25 gigabytes. That should be done in 20 seconds also. So we got a new uh, vocabulary. We got a new tokenization structure. We have still the same text, inflation, space, and medicine. The length of the sentences should be the same. Sentences should not have any deviation from our other example. Come on. Yes, I know, it takes a little bit time. Six seconds, seven seconds, four, three, come on. I need to finish this video. <laughs> okay, now we are done. We have everything up and loaded. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Yes, vocabulary, here we go. Yes, tokenizer configuration, the JSON phone. Yes, beautiful, but this is it, no? Yes. So you see, same sentences like in the other example, because we just changed the BERT model. So everything is the same, the maximum length is the same. Uh, but now, but now, but now, but now, here, if we put it in our model, we have now a much better model with 12 stacked encoders in our BERT model. So let's have a look at this. We do absolutely the same. We take from the last layer, the last hidden uh, state, from the last layer, from the last uh, BERT encoder, we take the hidden output. 
and we say okay if you're not familiar with this uh, notation we say for all sentences we just take the seal as token that's right at the beginning the classification token of the sentence and because of we have self-attention within our all between all words in our sentences it is enough to take the cls token you can of course choose uh, another token you can take all the uh, word or word piece token from the sentence you can add it together you can concatenate them you can play around this is absolutely free and open to you this is a very fast method just to take one specific token and because of self-attention everything is connected with everything else and yeah from all hidden outputs we have just the last hidden state this is great already done for us beautiful beautiful so now you can see for our 13 sentences we have now instead of seven six eight dimensional representation we have a vector space with 1000 uh, dimensions and we do the same we have a look at the heat map and yeah 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 you can see now that here in the upper left corner we have a clear cluster let's call this and here in the lower right corner we have a cluster and as you can see here somehow in the middle yeah there is an indication that there is also a clustering going on so clearly with a heat map we can separate the sentences in our paragraph our 13 sentences belong to three groups as we can see here in the heat map and then if you do the pca and we get the sentence features for each sentence. Here are the two-dimensional coordinate system for each sentence. This is exactly what we wanted. And if we have a look at this, oh my God, what happened here? Now this is interesting. And it is a beautiful example that sometimes a more advanced model can show you some correlation within your sentences that is not simple. So let's go. Where's sentence zero? Beautiful sentence zero. One, two, three. Four, five, six. So this here would be our first cluster. And then we go with seven, eight, nine. You see here on this trajectory here on this axis, we have now the second cluster. And the third cluster here is on this trajectory, 10, 11, 12. So this is interesting because it shows you that the representation is not optimal. Just looking here at seven, eight, nine, you can see if you would change the vector space that you would put an axis through seven, eight, nine hyperplane, you would get a much more interesting representation, a much more better visualization. If you change a little bit the representation of the whole vector space, the orientation of the axis. But as you can see, the cluster now suddenly is not so visibly because of the content of our sentences so if you are looking for some not so deep relation maybe it is good enough to have a base model because the more advanced your model will be the more hidden relation there will exist in a model that you even you as a human are not really aware of so you can clearly see that sentence six here is almost equidistant to all three clusters <laughs> that is fascinating. Okay, if you have a clue why sentence 6 is equidistance to everything here, leave a comment in the description of this video. I say thank you and I see you in the next video.